in Salem, Massachusetts. You'll find the second oldest cemetery in the country, the old Burying Point Cemetery. The Burying Point was established in 1637, and for its age, every occupant at the Burying Point unquestionably holds some historical importance. But one of the most interesting names etched into the ancient gravestones belongs to John Hathorne. John Hathorne was a judge during the Salem Witch Trials, and by most accounts, he was wholly unapologetic about his involvement in the trials. Even upon his deathbed, Hathorne is the greatest great-grandfather of Nathaniel Hawthorne, yes, the famous writer. Nathaniel was so ashamed of his ancestors' actions that he added a W to his surname in hopes of concealing their relationship. Along with Hawthorne, you'll find most of the names associated with the Salem Witch Trials at Burying Point, from the memorial for the wrongfully accused, situated in front of the cemetery, to the headstones of their precious chastisers. Old Burying Point Cemetery is a step back into time when the line between the wicked and the innocent blurred. Others who were laid to rest at Burying Point include the Mayflower Passenger, Captain Richard Moore, and the last governor of the Massachusetts Bay Colony, Simon Bradstreet. The graves of these historical figures and more can be visited from dawn until dusk. An entrance is free to all of those who are respectful. As for the miscreants, they may not pay with their cash, but will with their eternal souls. So, grave robbers, you are hereby warned. To all others, remember to stay on the path once inside the gates of the old burying point. Thousands of people have visited the infamous Salem, Massachusetts every year thanks to a rich fascination with this history and, of course, the witch trials. Another draw is the old burying point cemetery, which features a memorial to the victims of the Salem Witch Trials. Just behind the memorial are the graves of the very people who were accused, judged, and hanged. These poor souls for witchcraft. Old Burying Point, also known as Charter Street Cemetery, is the oldest cemetery in Salem and the second oldest in the nation. Burying Point is the final resting place for 347 who called Salem home upon their death. The cemetery is more than a tourist stop, more than a gimmick to which one capitalizes on. It's a marker of history, a dark time in our country's past. These are the graves, the remains of people from a time that should never be forgotten. The hysteria surrounding the events cost many innocent people their lives and shined a light on the dangers of rumor and fallacies. Hephaestabel Drake Packer was not involved in the witchcraft hysteria, having died nearly a decade before the trials even occurred, and, by most accounts, she died without scandal, just a young wife who died too soon, at only 25 years of age, so why did the name stick out in Hawthorne's mind when writing the novel? It most likely had very little to do with her, as much as it did with her gravestone, which featured a carving of death's hand. Death. Death's hand carved above the departed named is not an uncommon sight today, especially due to the symbol's popularity during the 17th century. The sight of a skull brandishing angel wings, angel wings is still an eye catcher, no matter how many times one walks past a gravestone with its marking. These decorative grave markers may s seem like a strange symbol to revere, but among the Puritans who were adamantly against the use of religious symbols in graves, death's hand became the it grave marker. During this grim era, death's hand became a popular trend in Salem and the surrounding areas as it symbolized one's physical death and one's spiritual regeneration. Spiritual regeneration is an interesting phrase and particularly captures the na nature of death in Salem. But what is the reason why? Well, since the first parties were laid to rest at Old Burying Point, there have been many strange occurrences. The occurrences were widely believed to be supernatural, as this was the era of which. It also bec is because of this era that many choose to discredit these accounts of paranormal activity as good case of hysteria. All of the witch hysteria aside, I know, hard to do, there are nearly 400 years 
of ghostly accounts at the old Burning Point Cemetery, so there must be something to these hauntings, right? Nathaniel Hawthorne once wrote, There is a fatality, a feeling of irres irresistible and inevitable, that it has the force of doom, which almost invariable compels human beings to linger around the haunt, ghost-like, the spot where great and marked events has given the color to their lifetime, and still the more ir irresistible, the darker, the tinge, the, the saddens it. Most people echo Hawthorne's words in Salem, and believe that the grounds of the old Varying Point Cemetery is saturated with restless spirits, and that it might just be the most haunted site in Massachusetts, if not in New England. Sensitives who have visited the old Burying Point have reported becoming overwhelmed with sensation of sadness and despair. Even while just walking through the graveyard, the heavy feeling of depression descends and sends innocent passerbys into feeling as though there's little hope to be found in the world. Over the years, people have successfully captured EVPs of voices from beyond the old Burying Point. If you're not sure what an EVP is, Electro Voice Phenomenon. If you've ever seen the ghost stories where they have a recorder and they're asking questions and waiting for a response, that is a ghost hunter trying to get an EVP. Also captured at the cemetery by photographers are mysterious shadows, imminent lights, orbs, white mists, and even apparitions. One of these apparitions belongs to Mary Bright Corey, sometimes called Corey, who died on August 28, 1684. She was the second wife of Giles Corey, who later became an unfortunate victim of the witch trials. Giles died, died from his inflicted torture on September 19, 1692, just after the eighth anniversary of Mary's passing. Another ghost that has been seen is the figure of a woman who appears in the back corner of the cemetery. She is usually spotted wearing a powder blue dress whilst holding a picnic basket in hand. Sometimes, she is also accompanied by a young boy. It is believed the two spirits were mother and son and died in a fire. In addition to the other ghosts spotted in Old Burying Point, another apparition that has been seen with great frequency is a lady in white. However, she seems to be a bit camera shy, <laughs> as the, there is little photographic evidence of her manifestations. However, you can still find lady in white as a urban legend which we will follow up on in our next video so be sure to like share and subscribe to keep up to date with all new content coming out the lady in white has allegedly even been spotted in the parking lot to the cemetery as well as nearby in buildings and restaurants though it's entirely possible these sightings are of different spirits if just one spirit who was the lady in white some have theorized that the Lady in White and the ghosts of Mary Corey are one and the same. Is it possible? I suppose so. But considering just how haunted the Burying Point is, it's more likely that they are separate ghost entities. It's also more likely that the Lady in White was an Irish Catholic immigrant, as they usually appear on the outskirts of the cemetery, which is where the Irish were buried. This segregation highlights the Anglo-American long history of mistreatment against the Irish in Massachusetts. Most people who love visiting old cemeteries have a few famous graveyards on their list, and for most of the people, Old Burning Point is at the top. These aren't just history buffs or hocus-pocus fanatics, these are people looking to connect, not just with the history, but with the lost souls who continue to haunt these ghost cities. But, be careful for what you wish for, as Burying Point is not your average ghost city. Below are some first-hand accounts of paranormal encounters at the second oldest cemetery in America. A few years back, a man named Mike visited Old Burying Point Cemetery and had a paranormal encounter. And as he said, I saw it peeking out of the ground, he said as, a, as he described what he captured with his camera. He claimed that the appar apparition was just in front of one of the gravestones and that it looked like, as he quote, a very strange torso wearing a suit tie, mutton chops, shoulder height out of the ground. That would scare anybody, right? Not long after Mike visited the cemetery, two young friends dared to enter Burying Point. 
It was in the dead of night that the bold duo walked through the graveyard, and it wasn't long before they saw something that they could not forget. What they saw was a shadowy apparition rising from the ground right in front of their gravestone. Two sisters had encountered encountered at the cemetery, but their experience that occurred while on a ghost tour. Neither of them had ever stopped, stepped foot inside the gates of the burning point prior to that night. Like others in the tour, they snapped cap copious amounts of photos, as most people do on tours. Later, when they were uploading the photos onto the computer, they were shocked to discover that they had captured paranormal images. One of the sisters said that she doesn't even have to look at the pictures to know that something supernatural had occurred in the night. For her, she says, those images she caught on the camera, they still haunt her to this day. Thank you for listening, and if you'd like to submit your ghost stories, be sure to send them to us at fear.netcontent at gmail.com. We are looking for ghost stories. We would love to read some of your stories, especially haunted houses or anything that is haunted related in a building. But we are really desperately looking for haunted house ghost stories. They can be made up or true recounts of your experiences. Just make them your content. Please don't steal someone else's. Thank you so much and stay scared.